Hey guys, so today's video is going to be my 2014 beauty favorites and I think this is a pretty self-explanatory video but I'm basically just going to go through all the main kind of categories of makeup and talk about what were my favorites for the year. Just the products that I continuously found myself reaching for throughout the entire year and the products that really stood out in my head as wow this is truly incredible and I love this. But I know this is already going to be a really long video so let's just go ahead and get started. So the first makeup category is going to be face primers. I actually started wearing face primer again this year. I just realized I really need to. I have such oily skin and in order to keep my makeup on for like a full work day like 10 plus hours it's just become a complete necessity for me. So I have two this year that I really love. And the first is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. This is the uh, blemish control version for acne prone skin. It is formulated with salicylic acid so it helps to control oil minimize pores and target and prevent future breakouts it is an oil-free formula and a lot of people think it has a green tint to it but it is just clear the packaging is just like that so it doesn't have any real like color correcting properties or anything like that and it's really lightweight I don't like primers that have that really like silicone kind of like slip to it I just not a fan of that feeling on my face so I really like this one I do notice a difference in my skin when I use it on a regular basis and the second primer is a little bit different it is the Tarte BB treatment primer. The claims on the back of this is that it lasts for 12 hours, it has buildable coverage, it's, uh, it says it's an oil-free moisturizer, and it also says it's pore minimizing and skin brightening. So when you do apply this, it basically does look and feel like a really lightweight kind of lower coverage foundation, or BB cream I guess, that's kind of what it's meant to mimic. And I really, really love this product. I think between this one and the Smashbox primer, this is actually my favorite between the two. I like that this is tinted because it does just kind of slightly amp up the coverage for my foundation, and it already gives me kind of like an even base to work with when I start applying my foundation because it cancels out any like redness or like slight discoloration and I feel like when I use this primer it kind of helps me like fake a good skin day even if my skin isn't looking too good because some days I apply my foundation and I think it looks really great and smooth and flawless and other days even if I'm still using the same products it just ends up looking kind of weird and that's totally based around my skin but whenever I use this it kind of like fakes a good skin day for me so I really like that and I don't do this too often but I like using this on days when I'm just wearing mineral powder because like I said it does just kind of like boost the coverage a little bit and I feel like it really gives my mineral powder something to kind of cling on to a little bit better and keeps it on longer than it normally lasts. So this is a definite favorite and I never really hear people talking about it but I think everyone should go out and try this and I forgot to mention but I'm in the shade fair which is the lightest. I think there's like five or six shade options for this product. The next category is foundation and this year I only have one that I'm going to talk about and it is the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 hour foundation. This year I've really really grown to love Tarte as a brand. I really love pretty much all of their products and I like everything that they stand for as a company but as the name implies this is meant to be a super long wearing foundation. It is also oil free and it does contain SPF. I can't remember like the exact level of sun protection on it but it's always a plus to have it in your foundation. I wear the shade Ivory which is one of their lightest I believe with neutral undertones and I just love this foundation. It is the best one I've tried this year and the best one I've tried in a long time. I like it because it's really full coverage but it still has like a natural finish. It's not too matte or heavy looking and it is the best foundation I have found for not breaking up and separating on my face throughout the day. The area where I get the most oily is definitely around like my nose and mouth and my foundation definitely tends to like split and break up in that area when I'm not using the right product and this is the best product I've found for avoiding that which is really really great. Next up we've got concealer and my concealer favorite actually hasn't changed since last year. It is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I'm in the shade Chantilly and this has been the only concealer I put on my under eyes for all of 2014 so I think that's really saying something. This is without a doubt my holy grail. I'm not planning on ever using anything else on my under eyes unless they discontinue this, which if they did, that would be a really bad decision because I know a lot of people love this. Formula of this is amazing. It provides really great coverage without being too heavy or cakey. It has like a nice kind of light reflecting quality to it too, so really nice for under the eyes to just kind of brighten. And it's the best thing I've found personally for not creasing under my under eyes. I have these kind of like natural annoying creases under my eyes just from the shape of my eyes and pretty much everything creases except for this bad boy right here, so this is a definite winner. And tying into that, I also have a favorite for setting my eyes and it is the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Under Eye Setting Powder. I'm going to try and show this without getting it everywhere but it is just a really lightweight, really silky translucent powder that has like this really fine shimmer in it. When you actually apply it though it, the shimmer doesn't like translate, doesn't make your under eyes look really sparkly or anything like that. And this just really locks in my concealer, further prevents it from creasing, never looks cakey or heavy or like unnatural under the eyes like some of the like yellow tinted powders tend to look on me. So if you have problems with your under eye concealer creasing on you, 
definitely try out this combo. You seriously will not be let down. It's amazing. Moving right along to the next category, and that is face powder. Um, for this, I also have two products once again. The first one is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Airbrush Foundation. I've talked about this before on my channel as well. So this is meant to be a mineral foundation, but I do set my regular foundation with this. My skin hasn't been that great over the past little while, so as you can see, I really like building up my coverage and getting like a true full coverage look for my complexion. And I just like this once again because it just ends up looking really natural, and it's the best thing I found to layer over top of my Tarte foundation to really ensure that like full day of wear. Next is my Bare Minerals Original Mineral Foundation. I'm just in the shade Fair, and I like this for a lot of the same reasons that I like the Tarte powder. When I am wearing mineral powder on its own though, I do prefer this option. That one is advertised as like a full coverage powder foundation, but I find I can actually get better coverage from this one when I'm wearing it on its own. Just takes a little bit more building up, but the finished result is a little bit better in my opinion. Moving right along to my favorite highlighting products from 2014. This was like a no-brainer for me, and it is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. Now these are definitely a pricier product. They're very luxurious. These are products that I can honestly say are worth every single penny. If you want a product that's just going to give you that really subtle, just beautiful glow to your skin, this is the best thing out there. If you like a more dramatic, like shimmery, or just more... I don't want to say like obvious, but I guess that's kind of the word I'm looking for. And then these products are probably not for you. They are very subtle. This one here is Ethereal Light. It's just a really pale, they call it like a moonlit kind of glow. I use this all over my face, just kind of lightly dusted over top of whatever I'm setting my foundation with. And it just gives a really nice radiant glow to the skin. And the second one I have here is Mood Light. This one I have to be a little bit careful with. I do use this as more of like a traditional highlight, but I just have to be kind of careful with how I apply it because it is a little bit darker than my skin tone actually, but it's it's really beautiful as well. And I also have the ambient lighting palette and diffuse light. I love diffuse light too. It's the first one I ever got. It's just like almost empty. So I figured there was no point in actually showing it. Okay. So I just had to take a super quick break because my battery started dying really annoyingly. But if my lighting has changed, that's why I live in Canada and the sun likes to set at around 3 PM in the afternoon here because who needs vitamin D anyways, right? Okay. But next is one of my favorite categories and that is blush. You guys know how I feel about blush. For this category, I did my best and I narrowed it down to just three favorites, which was actually quite hard for me. And the first one is NARS Gaiety. If you have been subscribed to my channel for any length of time, you're probably like, dear God, shut up about this blush. So I'm not going to talk about it too much. It's just a matte, super cool toned pink blush. If you want to see why I love it so much, I will link my top five favorite blush video down there. But I used this so, so much in the beginning of the year. And I have to say, I don't reach for it as much now, but it definitely deserved an honor mention. We had a pretty good run. Next is Benefit Rockateur Box Powder Blush. This is pretty much the blush that I reach for when I do my eye makeup and then I look at my face and I'm like, what do I put on my cheeks? <laughs> this goes with absolutely everything. Everyone describes it as like a rose gold kind of color. Um, it's really neutral. It just has like a nice sheen to it. It's not shimmery at all. It just gives kind of like a nice glow. And even though it is more neutral, it still like warms up the complexion. It just, it just looks really good and it goes with absolutely everything. I think everyone should have this in their collection to be honest. And my final blush choice was the Tarte 12 Hour Amazonian Clay Blush in the color Exposed. This is what it looks like and it's definitely the blush I reach for the most throughout the fall and winter. It is fully matte and it's just a really neutral blush. I do have it on today and I just really love how it looks. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. Next is bronzers and contouring products. And my top favorite is actually out of this little Makeup Forever Artist Shadow Trio that I customized myself. I can't remember the actual like number and name for the shade, but I will have it listed in the description below if you're interested. Makeup Forever Artist Shadows are a really cool product because they are completely multi-purpose. You can use them on the eyes, on the face, you can even use them on the lips, which sounds really crazy, but I've tried it and it works. So I made this custom little trio as a little highlighting and contouring palette for my skin tone. The shade I'm talking about is obviously this one here. It's what I use for contouring today and I feel like it's coming up a lot more harsh on camera than it actually is in person. I did do like a pretty hard contour but I feel like it's a little bit darker on camera and it's just a really neutral matte light brown shade. I did just hit pan on it today when I was using it so go me. I feel really accomplished right now but I just love it. It's the perfect shade for my skin tone. And then I have a couple actual bronzers to talk about. First one I used more in the beginning of the year and it is the Body Shop Honey Bronzer in the shade 01 or Light 
white matte. I do this thing where basically when I'm too lazy to contour, I just kind of like lightly define my face with a matte bronzer just because it's a little bit more like forgiving and it takes a little bit less effort pretty much. And my second favorite bronzer is really similar, but it's the one I've been reaching for more over like the past couple months or so and I really love it too. And it is the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze in Tantric. This just comes in one shade, but that's the name of it. First of all, this thing is absolutely massive, like never gonna run out of this thing. But I really like both of these. I just reach for this one more recently, but if you want like a more like lower end alternative and you don't want to shell out the money for the Marc Jacobs one, the Body Shop version is a great dupe. So those are all my kind of like complexion favorites for the year of 2014. Now we get to move on to eyes and lips. And I'm gonna kick this off with brows. And definitely my favorite brow product for the year was the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo. I use the shade Caramel for the majority of the year, but I recently switched to Auburn because I did dye my hair a little bit darker. This is just what it looks like. I have a weird little dark spot in there because I used it before my brush was fully dry the other day accidentally. Yeah, it matches my hair color really well. And I know some people don't like my brows, but I like them. I like the really like bold, intense brow look. So that's just my preference. Next, I have a favorite eye primer. And around the time this video goes up, I'm probably gonna do a post on my Instagram about this um, showing like a swatch comparison. But it is the two Face Shadow Insurance Glitter Glue version. This is basically just like a slightly tacky eye primer and I don't actually use this for glitter. What I use it for is any eyeshadow that basically is lacking in pigmentation or it has like a lot of fallout or if it is like a shimmery eyeshadow. This just really gives a perfect base for any shadow to cling on to and it just makes it so much more vibrant and it really makes the shadow pop. So what I actually do is I apply just like a regular eye primer and then I do like the base and my crease and transition color and everything like that. And then I actually go in and pat a little bit of this over top just on my lid and then I go in and like finish it off with my so, like lid shade because that tends to be where I wear more like shimmery or glittery eyeshadows. And it just makes such a difference in the pigmentation like I think everyone should have this product. It honestly completely transforms eyeshadows and this has completely changed the way my eye looks have looked in 2014. Next we have eyeshadow and my top choice Probably isn't gonna come as a surprise to any of you, but it is the Tarte Be Magnificent eyeshadow palette that came out in the beginning of the year. This is what the palette looks like. It is basically fully matte. You get six eyeshadows, two darker like eyeliner shades, and also one of their Amazonian clay blushes. I have to say with Tarte this year, this palette really made them nail their matte formula for their eyeshadows. Some of their eyeshadows in the past have definitely been lacking, but they really, really nailed the formula for this palette. The shades are perfect for me. I reach for them every single day. I actually use these two shades here um, every day for my like base and my transition shade because they just work so well and they're just incredibly easy to blend. This palette was limited edition unfortunately but if you like the look of this they did recently actually just release a new palette called Tartlet. It's honestly really similar it's basically just like a bigger extended version of this palette and I picked that one up too and the quality is totally there again. So I'd really recommend checking it out if you missed out on this palette or if these kind of shadows really appeal to you. Next I have my Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. This palette has been shown and like talked about to death this year. I'm sure everyone's seen it. But it's just a really gorgeous collection of like rose gold and like plum tone neutrals. It's honestly just my perfect neutral palette because all the shades in it just complement my skin tone and my hair color and my eye color really well. And of course I have to give a shout out to my Urban Decay Electric palette. When I first got into makeup I was like obsessed with wearing like bright neon eye looks every day and I was in like grade 7 It was like what I was all about back then So when this palette came out it just really spoke to my inner like 13 year old who was obsessed with neons And couldn't really find anything because there wasn't anything like great on the market other than like some old MAC eyeshadows This is what this palette looks like It's super dirty because I got loose pigment all over it when I was doing Halloween makeup looks but they are pressed pigments and they're all extremely vibrant and the color payoff on them is just amazing. I'm gonna swatch a couple of them here. There's a couple really quick swatches for you guys, but yeah, they're just amazing quality. I think the thing that's most impressive with this palette is how easy they are to blend for being so pigmented and so vibrant. And last but not least for eyeshadow, I actually have a single eyeshadow from Laura Mercier. I rarely, rarely ever buy single eyeshadows anymore. It has to be something really special because I do have a lot of palettes and just naturally I tend to reach for my palettes and instead of the single eyeshadows that I do have. So the fact that I bought this and have been using it so much really says something about the shadow. And it's in the shade African Violet. And I really don't think the camera is going to do this shadow any like justice, but I'm gonna try and film a close up here and swatch it so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like here. It's just this kind of light dusky lavender, but it has this beautiful gold sheen all throughout it. It's just seriously stunning. And here is a swatch of it. It's 
kind of hard to tell but as you can see it just has that beautiful golden sheen to it so this eyeshadow is definitely worth checking out especially if you have green eyes you need this in your life it is just so so flattering and next category is eyeliner um, for liquid liner this year my favorite would be the Kat Von D tattoo liner this is another product that everybody talks about it's just a really standard fine brush tip eyeliner and I do really like this this is the one I reach for the most there are however a couple things I don't like about it one issue that I have is as I'm drawing along the tip will kind of dry out and I'll have to kind of like scribble on my hand quite a bit to make the product actually like flow smoothly again so that's kind of annoying and also on some people this eyeliner is matte but on me it has like a definite sheen to it and that kind of bugs me because I would definitely prefer a totally matte finish for an eyeliner but the ease of application for this product still makes it my favorite despite those other two things I have lots of other pen style liners like Tarte, Givenchy, Marc Jacobs etc and none of them apply as well as this one does this one just has the most flexible tip and it actually conforms to like the curve of my eyelid because I don't know about you guys but my eyelids aren't flat so a really stiff liner tip just doesn't really work so yeah the fact that this is still my favorite despite the couple things I don't like about it that are kind of annoying I think really says something and then I have a Smashbox always sharp eyeliner these are a really cool idea basically every time you twist down the lid it self sharpens one little tip for them though because obviously you don't need to sharpen your eyeliner every single time you're using it is actually if you just click the lid on you have to kind of get it in the right spot for it to do it but you can just kind of click the liner on and there's like a little gap in between and that'll keep it secure on there but it won't sharpen it so you're not wasting product and burning through it super fast but this is in the shade bare it's just a nude eyeliner and I use this on my waterline I have really sensitive eyes my eyes are pretty much always like dry and irritated so my waterline gets really red so this is just really nice as a kind of little pick-me-up to make me look a little bit more awake and to kind of brighten up my face now for mascara this year I had two standout favorites and the first one is the makeup forever smoky extravagant mascara this was in the uh, Sephora Beauty Insider birthday gift this year. It has a little kind of tapered conical shaped wand. And for me, my two biggest things with mascara is that it holds a curl really well and that it also separates the lashes. This definitely does both of that and it really adds a lot of volume and drama to my like really short pathetic eyelashes. I'll try and insert a picture of me wearing it here. Um, I haven't been wearing it lately because I find the tube has kind of started to dry out a little bit and it's getting a little bit clumpy. I am still going to purchase the full size though and see if that one lasts a little bit better. I'm hoping it does but that might be the one drawback to this mascara. And my second is the Hourglass Film Noir Full Spectrum Mascara. This is what the wand looks like. It's just really skinny, really standard. It kind of tapers a little bit in the center and then flares out at the edges but it's pretty basic. The thing I really like about this mascara is that it's actually formulated with Pro Vitamin B5 so it acts as kind of a lash conditioner and in the few months I've been using this I actually have noticed a difference in my lash growth. I broke off a couple of my lashes like a few months ago by accident and they've grown back really really fast and I know part of it is due to this mascara and this one definitely gives a more natural look than the smoky extravagant mascara but it just really nicely fans out the lashes, adds a little bit of length and doesn't look too crazy. Okay so we are almost done. We are moving on to the final category and that is lip products. For lip products for me you will probably know it's kind of a theme and that is that I like extremely long wearing lip products. I do not like touching up my lips. I just like can't stand it. I'm honestly not that good at applying lip products and I just I just can't be bothered to like reapply a lipstick every like two hours. It has to last longer than that for me to actually wear it. And most of the time honestly I don't even wear lip products but I do have some products that really stood out to me this year. And the first one is actually what I have on today and it is the Kat Von D Studded lipstick in Lovecraft. So on camera I feel like this is coming off a little bit more pink than it actually looks in person. In person it's a little bit more mauve and a little bit more nude. They came out with these lipsticks I think in June or July sometime over the summer and this is just what it looks like in the tube. Now for me with my skin tone this is a nude lipstick. If you are also really fair skinned you know that finding a nude lipstick is a struggle. The really like classic like beige lighter nudes just absolutely look horrendous on fair skin because it's too close to like my actual skin tone and then when I go for the more like 90s like Kylie Jenner inspired lip that everyone's been wearing this year a lot of them just end up looking straight up brown on me which is okay for like some occasions I'm not like totally against a brown lip but it's just not necessarily the most flattering so if you are fair skin and looking for a good nude lip I definitely recommend checking this out I get so many compliments on this lipstick when I wear it and this formula is really matte so it stays on me for hours and hours I usually don't have to touch it up after eating or drinking and I know some people complain 
complain about the formula of this. They say it's kind of dry and that it kind of tugs when it's applying. I personally don't have that issue with these lipsticks, but I think it's just like with anything, just make sure your lips are well hydrated before you apply it. Make sure they're nice and smooth. Use a lip scrub before, whatever you want to do. That is what it looks like there. You can see that it is a little bit more mauve. I feel like it's still not showing up totally true to color. I'm sorry about how dry my hands are. They look really gross. Next up, we have a product from Bite Beauty, and Bite Beauty has actually been another favorite for me for the year of 2014. I just really fell in love with this brand. I tried them for the first time this year, and I love all of their products. But my favorite from them have definitely been the Cashmere Lip Creams. These are a liquid lipstick that go on creamy and then they dry to a stain but they're never drying on the lips. Like if you like liquid lipsticks, but you find them a little bit too drying, definitely try these out. Because even when they dry down, they stay like really, really hydrating and comfortable on the lips. So I really love them because of that. This one is in the shade Moscato, and it's definitely the one I reach for the most. I'm gonna swatch it here too. It doesn't look super, super bright in the tube, but when you actually apply it, it's just like a super vibrant hot pink. I love this, especially in the summer. Next, I have another liquid lipstick, and this one is Utopia from Lime Crime. This is one of their velveteen formulas, but this has been a definite favor for me, and it actually matches the scarf I'm wearing right now. But these are also a liquid lipstick. These dry to like a really true matte formula. I still find them not drying on the lips though. I find them quite comfortable. And that is it there. It's definitely looking more pink on the camera, but it's more of like a radiant orchid kind of purple. This is a lipstick that truly looks flattering on absolutely everyone. Once again, the wear time for these are just absolutely insane. They don't transfer at all. Um, I find after like eating, they kind of like rehydrate in the center of your lips and then they kind of start to wear off but you can just touch that up really quickly and you're good to go again and the applicator is also really nice too I find it easy to get like a nice clean crisp edge even though it does have a doe foot applicator so that's a definite plus plus. and my last two favorites for this year are more like lip treatment kind of products and the first one is the Dior lip glow I've talked about this before on my channel too and if you're not familiar it's like a lip balm but it basically adjusts to like the pH um, balance in your skin and your like natural body chemistry to create the perfect shade of pink. And I wish I could show it to you, but I am actually like completely out of it. I'm scraping every last little bit out of it, but in the tube, it just looks like a really light pink like lip balm. This is what I throw on when I don't want to be wearing lip products, but I feel like my face needs like an extra little something to kind of like perk everything up a little bit. Ultra hydrating, it has sun protection, it's just an all-around awesome product and I'm gonna have to repurchase one of these right away. And my final product is the Bite Agave Lip Mask. This is like a really, really new favorite for me but it completely blew everything else out of the water in terms of lip balms and lip treatments this year and it's just honestly saved my lips this winter. Even when my lips are like cracking and flaking and just disgusting, it gets my lips back to normal in like hardly any time at all. So this is an incredible product. If you suffer from really dry lips, definitely try this out. So that actually wraps up all of my beauty favorites for the year 2014. I know that was a lot. I hope this video isn't like too ridiculously long and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I love this year. If you have any favorites, definitely comment down below and let me know what they are because I would love to check them out. I, I'm always up for new product recommendations. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for all of my future videos. And if there's anything you want to see or any types of videos you really like, comment down below and let me know as well. I'm definitely open to video requests. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!